Good morning, year four. It's lovely to be with you again. And it's Monday, the 6th of July. And today we're going to read as a reader. And we are continuing the text which Mrs. Randall is reading to you. So this little passage here is quite a gruesome passage, but I'm going to read it to you now. Are you ready to read along? Next morning, a choppy sea and a northerly breeze kept them busy until midday when a lessening of the wind allowed them to gnaw their ration of the ship's biscuit. Ursula was sitting with her back against the ship's rail by a small wooden shrine in the stern of the boat. She was in her usual place with Fronto between her and Juba, so she didn't have to look at him. But now their plot to punish Castor made it necessary for them to work together. Although she would never forgive Juba for selling their sister, it was a relief to be able to speak to him again. They'd been discussing their plot when the captain interrupted them. You should kiss Castor's feet. He was speaking Latin rather than Britonic. What do you mean? Ursula had been sucking her piece of the ship's biscuit to make it soft. She looked at the captain. I mean you should kiss his feet in gratitude. Why should we be grateful to him? Juba glowered. The captain kept one hand on the tiller and turned round. Because when the three of you first arrived, I thought you'd be goners. What do you mean? Fronto asked. I mean you were plump, pampered and posh. If he'd let you hide out in his cabin reading scrolls, you'd be in no shape to survive in Britannia. Ursula scowled at him. Why not? Because it's a cold and hostile country, full of wolves and other wild beasts. She lifted her chin. I like animals. Captain Carolus frowned. Sorry if I don't pronounce that correctly. It's not just the animals. Britons are the most savage race you will find. Their warriors run around naked, covered in blue tattoos. They put clay in their hair, which they wear long. When it dries, they look like the sun god, with their hair all sticking out in spiky rays. And when they kill you, and they will kill you, be sure of that. They cut off your head and keep it so your spirit can't go down to the underworld. Ooh. There's a lot to pick out in this text. You could almost pick out every sentence to wonder exactly the meaning behind it. But I've picked out a few I think, I wonders and I question here. So the first part I've picked out is here at the top on the top line. Next morning, a choppy sea and northerly breeze kept them busy until midday. So I've put, I wonder what it means the breeze kept them busy. How did the breeze keep them busy? And then reading and thinking about the context of the sentence I have put, I think it means they probably had to help keep the boat on course so that it didn't rock and they were going in the wrong direction. Or perhaps things on deck were being swept about by the wind. So if it was really breezy, maybe some of the furniture on the top deck were being swept around. So they had to make sure that everything was in place um, so things didn't go overboard. The next part I've put here, it says, but now their plot to punish Castor. What were they plotting? I'd be intrigued to find out exactly what they were discussing and plotting together. A further part I've picked up on here, it says, I mean you should kiss his feet in gratitude. And I've put there, I wonder what the term means to kiss someone's feet. And then I've put there, I think it might mean to be exceedingly grateful. Because if you kiss someone's feet, it's almost like a royalty thing that you're very grateful as to whatever that person has done for you. Another part I've put here, it says, I mean you are plump pampered and posh. Now I've put a line there and I'm wondering whether you could fill that bit in for me. What do you think it means? Why is it important that they were plump, pampered and posh, all beginning with P there? Here it said you'd be in no shape to survive in Britannia. I wonder what this means, you'd be in no shape. What does it mean? Hopefully we will find out as the text goes on. Then the next part I've picked up on here, their warriors run around naked, covered in blue tattoos. 
And I put there, why blue tattoos? Was it a special mix that they made? Was it quite cheap that it was blue? Why wasn't it red? Why did they choose blue to cover themselves in tattoos? The next part I've picked up on here, it says they will kill you. It says, and when they kill you, and they will be sure of that, why must they be killed? I wonder why they would not be kept as prisoners. Why was it important that they were killed? And a question I've put there is, what is the underworld? It says there, they cut off your head and keep it so your spirit can't go down to the underworld. What is the underworld? Because the underworld doesn't sound like heaven to me. So why would you want to go to the underworld? Okay, year four, there are plenty more things that you could pick up on in this piece of text. So I wish you well today. Write them down in your science book, if you've got a little bit of room. And your teachers look forward to your thinks, I wonder, and I question. And I will talk to you again tomorrow. Goodbye for now.